You know, it was often said that Marlon Brando, he wouldn't even bother to read the script beforehand. Call me Marlon Brando, baby. Parasite Eve. Right, so this game is a sequel to a novel of the same name. It's like Die Hard, right? The game begins in New Look York on Christmas Eve, 1996. It's exactly like Die This is Die Hard. Welcome to Die Hard. We play as Officer Aya Bria, and Aya is on a date. Oh, that's nice. Oh, kind of spooky though, spooky tone. And her and her date are attending the opera at Carnegie Hall. And Aya says something like, oh, this is very nice. And the man says, I even had my dad get us the best seats for tonight. I tell you what, if bragging about your dad doesn't get a woman into bed, you're doing it wrong. Aya then sprints away from the man. Yeah, okay, she's gonna go find his dad. So, the opera begins. Everyone, shh. Opera is happening. The songstress is singing. La, 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 la. It's all auto tuned, but don't worry about that. But then the songstress, she spots Aya in the crowd, right? And like looks at her like, Rrr. and then suddenly everyone on the stage and the members of the audience all catch fire. What the fuck? Oh, that's hot. As the opera house burns, Aya knocks over her taint and whips out her gun. And then she confronts the songstress. A freeze NYPD. No, wait, the order's wrong. She goes, bang, 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 bang. Freeze NYPD. The songstress is unfazed, but she does take note that Aya is unaffected by her singing. The point is that she's the only one who hasn't caught fire. Is that right? So the songstress says, you should be awakening soon. Ira is confused and she battles the woman. Hiya, 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 hiya. I was supposed to have sex with somebody's dad. You ruined everything. As they battle, the songstress says, Listen up, Aya. Me and your bodies are trying to communicate <laughs> with one another. The more you use your power, the more like me you shall become. What, an opera singer? I then asked the exact same question I would, which is, what power? What are you talking about? And the songstress reveals, my name is Eve. And this causes Aya to suddenly have a memory flashback. And she pictures herself as a small child in the hospital. While she's flashing back, right? That distraction gives Eve enough chance to make an escape. If you're hanging out with your buds, right? Yeah. Uh, remember that time? Oh. Dash away. Uh-oh. I'd better give chase, says Aya. Da -na 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 -na. But then while she's running, she spots a little girl. And the little girl runs off, but she's familiar to Aya. So Aya's looking around, oh, I gotta find Eve. And suddenly she's spotted by a rat. And the rat, it's mutating and becomes a giant monster. Oh no. Uh, but then Aya defeats it, no problem. And carries on. So, Aya makes it backstage. And there are many more burnt people there. <laughs> Jesus God, like, he, this guy looks ridiculous. It looks like those, like, really spicy Doritos, and it's like the flavoring is all red. Bruh. Anyway, with his tying breath, he says, The main actress's name is... <sighs> Melissa. So, Aya goes, thanks very much, and heads off to Melissa's dressing room. And in there is a diary. Let's read into the diary, fellas. So, she was obsessed with opera, it turns out, and it was her dream to be a star. But she was co-cast with another woman, <gasps> Suzanne. But then Suzanne burned in an apartment fire. <laughs> Melissa thinks that this has happened because of how badly she wanted that part. Right? Like, I wanted to be the number one so badly that my wishing thinking caused Suzanne to catch fire. I want to be the next Markiplier. I want to be the next Markiplier. I die! The diary also says that Melissa is tackling the problem with medication, which she keeps having to increase the dose of <laughs> to stop her fire powers or something from happening. So, Aya leaves the room, and then she's running around, and she catches up with Melissa. Aha! And Melissa is struggling mentally with her identity as Eve. Ah, uh, Melissa, 
No, I'm Eve. I'm struggling with my sexuality. What? Then Melissa turns into a monstrous version of herself. Ooh. Eve declares that the day of the mitochondria is coming, that they shall be free. And Aya goes, this is fucking stupid. Time for a flashback, fellas. And so Aya dreams of a hospital. And then while she's doing that, Eve escapes again. What is happening? Aya gives chase to Eve again and ends up in the sewers. Aya sees the little girl again and follows her until she runs into Eve again. Ah! And then Aya says, my body, it's getting hot. I like where this is going. And then Eve taunts her and says, you will understand soon enough. And then Eve slash Melissa leaves and sets a monster on Aya. Gotta point out, this walk animation is fantastic. It's like an inflatable tube, man. And then, goo. Aya defeats the monster and returns to the surface. I'm so glad I'm out of that sewer, but my shoes are ruined. But just as she gets to the surface, a reporter is there and asking her for an interview. What is it like in the sewer? No, I presume they actually want to know, hey, what happened with all the fire and stuff? And how come you're the only one who didn't catch fire? No interviews. Then suddenly, her partner Daniel walks up and King hits the man. How could this happen? What, like in the back of the head? For asking a question? No, that's some policing I like to see. Then Daniel takes her home. By the way, what happened to my date? Daniel says, I heard from a cop that your boyfriend ran out of there like a wuss. He didn't even want to be on fire. And I guess real defensive. No, it's not like that. I had him escort me out because he was pestering me for a date. Daniel, shouldn't you be with your son anyway? Fuck you. It's Christmas Eve. You're a bad father. <laughs> and then Daniel goes, he knows his dad's a cap. My boy understands that he doesn't get a Christmas or a birthday or dinner. And then I have falls asleep with her eyes so <laughs> day two so the next morning she reports to the police station hiya listen up fellas some sort of esp from melissa set the victims on fire what the hell is esp there's nothing in the script that says esp all right the answer for esp is on the screen it's a mystery to me though extra spicy poison but the officers are skeptical but daniel says i believe you you know what? I'm gonna put you on the case. As the sole survivor of the incident, it makes perfect sense. Aya joins Captain Baker at a press conference. And the captain says, We believe that this is a terrorist attack. No, 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 no. Hear me out. Not a terrorist attack. There's this chick. Her name's Melissa, right? And she was taken over by this other chick. And she's called Eve. She's a real bitch. Anyway, the reason I survived is obviously thanks to my mitochondria. And the captain is just going, the fuck is this? Anyway, after the press conference, the captain scolds her. Damn it, uh, the media's gonna have a field day with this one. Mayor's on my ass. You can't just be shooting up orphanages willy-nilly. You gotta have a warrant. The police then receive a call from a Japanese scientist, and he says that I might know some stuff, and I'm on my way. And another police officer just goes, By the way, research at the Museum of Natural History just published a new theory on mitochondria. So Daniel and I are head there. Really? I'm sure there's lots of fucking studies on mitochondria. Oh, I'm not saying that powerhouse of the cell thing. That's stupid. What is this, Reddit? Thank you, kind stranger. Here they meet Dr. Clamp. When Aya sees him, however, she gets another flashback. Jesus Christ, woman. She thinks that Dr. Clamp could be the man in the hospital visions. <gasps> Obviously, it's like her as a little kid. Something happened to her in hospital as a little kid, and that's the reason why she's not affected by the fire. So, Dr. Clamp says, Oh, mitochondria. No, no, get in trouble. He doesn't have a, a distinguished voice. So, mitochondria actually possess their own unique genetic code, like a separate organism. Is that true? Comment section, is that true? Dr. Clamp also explains that humans are only allowed to exist because the mitochondria allow it. The mitochondria are even capable of discharging massive amounts of electricity and heat energy for a human to burn 1600 degrees of heat must be generated. It's not true at all. What? And also there are hundreds of mitochondria in every single cell. So if all the cells were activated at once, achieving that effect would be easy. Dr. Glamp 
then turns dramatically and returns to his work. Anyway, Daniel and Aya return to the police station. The chief informs them that Melissa is scheduled for a concert in the Central Park Amphitheatre tonight for Christmas. They did cancel the event after last night, but the public is gathering there now and unaware of the potential danger. Daniel becomes upset. <laughs> oh no, my ex-wife and son are there. Storms out of the room and then... Daniel, we're not through yet, mess on mess. I've got to save my ex-wife and her new boyfriend. <laughs> All right, Daniel and I are hurrying over. So Daniel tries to enter first, but as soon as he gets close, he starts to burn up. Okay, so there's like a force field thing, right? And you walk into it and you start catching fire. Holy fuck, okay. So he quickly backs away. And Aya must go in alone because she doesn't catch fire. Aya goes in. And she discovers Eve is there. Eve suddenly says, Ah, soon you will be free of your host. The strength of the self-evolving mitochondria over the weak humans, she says. Anyway, members of the crowd start melting and merging into one another. I didn't see that coming. Aya runs up onto the stage and confronts Eve and says, Stop what you're doing. It's not very nice. And Eve runs away. Aya gives chase with... Images of the little girl once again guiding her. Oh, the flashbacks are helping. Uh, she fights some monsters along the way. He ya, he ya. And Aya eventually catches up to Eve, which is nice. And <laughs> Eve is waiting on a horse and carriage. Hey, I know we've been fighting and stuff, but you want to go for a carriage ride? Aya accepts and boards the carriage. Oh, this is very romantic. All uh, right, this horse. Let me just set this horse on fire. <laughs> oh, they actually do it. Okay. The benefits of never reading the script in advance. It starts sprinting. It's going real fucking fast. And Eve asks Aya some questions, but they can't hear anything because they're on a rickety fucking carriage and they're going at a thousand miles an hour with a horse on fire. Why are you siding with all the humans? Because I am one fucking dummy. Yeah, but your mitochondria brought you to the opera the other day. Actually, that was my date. Why don't you join forces with me? Together we could take over the world. And that. And I says no. And Eve leaves. And the carriage then crashes. <laughs> We cut back to Daniel, who's still outside of Central Park. Do you remember to save my ex-wife and boyfriend and also maybe my kid? Uh, and we didn't see any of that, so I don't know. Oh, good. She did. Daniel's son, Ben, then comes running up. Ben says he was there with his mum, but his mum was caught in the slaughter and only Ben managed to escape. Now, Daniel returns to the police station and leaves Ben with another officer, Kathy. He informs the captain of what happened, and they begin to evacuate Manhattan. He then goes to search for Aya. Meanwhile, the Japanese scientist has arrived. He approaches a roadblock and explains who he is. But apparently there's a language barrier between them. Konnichiwa. What? What does that mean? Domo arigato. Oh my god. It sounds like a direct threat. And then randomly one of the police officers just catches fire. And so at the roadblock, they're distracted and the Japanese scientist sneaks in ninja style. <laughs> right, he's, and he sneaks into a nearby building. In this building, he finds Aya and she's unconscious. Oh no, when she comes to, this the Japanese scientist. And he introduces himself as Maida. And then suddenly Daniel comes in, all right? And Maida says, ah, it's exposition time, fellas. Did you know that this once happened in Japan? It wasn't just a manga. It happened many years ago, although on a smaller scale. Those Japanese, they're light years ahead of us. Oh, that's quite clever. Right, so the events he's about to describe are actually a short summary of the events that happen in the book Parasite Eve. This game is actually the sequel to the book. I've never seen that before. You haven't seen that either. Shut up. Maida explains that all of this started when a scientist's wife was involved in a car crash. The scientist tried to cultivate her liver cells in order to keep her alive, right? And he called the cells Eve. But he found that the liver cells multiplied too much, ooh, like a cancer, and her mitochondria eventually took over her body. Eve then acquires the, what? A scientist's sperm to try and create an ultimate being. 
I mean, deep down, aren't we all? This is because her host body wouldn't last very long. After the accident, her kidneys were transplanted into a young girl. Eve then implanted a fertilized egg in the young girl, and the young girl gave birth to an ultimate being. Researching all of this, Led made her here. And so I can't help but think, maybe I'm a monster like Eve, because I'm also immune, and, you know, this has got stuff to do with me. So she sends Maida and Daniel away, fearing, I shall cause you too much harm, please go. And then she thinks of her sister, Maya, who died in a car crash with her mum. What? I'm confused. So here we have come to the midpoint, and I think it's a good idea in these very scary videos for us to reflect on what has happened so far. So, there's a lady. Her name is... I can't remember, don't worry about that. Now, she goes to the opera, and there's a lady on stage singing, and then everyone catches fire, and it's the lady on stage's fault. And then, there was a man who didn't have any skin. I think someone lost a kidney. All right, I think that's everything. Day three, Aya leaves the building, and she finds Maida waiting outside. So, Daniel pulls up in his police car, and then Maida joins Aya and Daniel in their investigation. Yay, a team of three. But the city has now been evacuated and is empty. So, Maida takes a sample of Eve from Aya's clothing. Anyway, so he tests it at Dr. Clamp's lab while he's awake. Please don't tell Dr. Clamps. You'll get me with the clamps. Editor, use the clamps meme from Futurama. Thank you. That's how I get things done. I just bark orders at the editor. Now, he explains that normal mitochondria cannot generally take control of the nucleus, but Eve's mitochondria, well, they're special, and they've undergone massive evolutionary changes. You go, girl. Now, Aya wants her own blood tested because she doesn't want that to be true of her as well. Maida does that, and he finds that Aya is also infected with Eve's mitochondria. F Listen up, fellas, there's a twist. Turns out that Aya's own mitochondria is fighting back with their own power. And then the script has a typo, and it says, Hidea is unsure of why this is. And then they are interrupted by Dr. Clamp. Oh no, he's got the clamp. And he is very upset about the trio using his lab. He he then inspects Aya's blood though, and he is impressed that Aya's cell is fighting off Eve's. Your cells are very impressive. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but then Daniel interrupts and he goes, everyone shut the fuck up for a minute. My son and my ex-wife's name are on a list here on your computer, Dr. Clamps. What's up with that? Anyway, Dr. Clamps doesn't tell him nothing and they are on a stalemate. <laughs> and then the trio leave. Then they drive over to the police precinct, and along the drive, Hidea informs, is that the same typo, or is there a new person? I'll find out in the edit. Hidea informs them that the list was an HLA type listing. It's a list that says whether organs will or won't be rejected when transplanting. So they arrive at the precinct, but the precinct is in ruins after an attack from Eve. Now, most officers in the station have been killed. Aya follows the trail of Daniel's son, who is being protected by the police chief. And he finds the chief and Ben, who are being cornered by a mutated police dog. Aya kills the dog, hooray, and rescues the chief and Ben. It wasn't worth it. Look at this kid. Look at this dumbass kid. It just sh you, you killed the wrong one. It's day four now, fellas. Are you spooked yet? The remaining police officers decide to put Daniel in charge and help take down Eve. Maida thinks that the attack on the police station was actually just a distraction, though, and Eve's body is most likely starting to break down. So she is probably going to seek out a sperm bank in order to give birth to the ultimate being. Heist at the old sperm bank. Happens once a week. Put it all in the bag. <laughs> One of the dye packs go off or they're just okay enough of that that's disgusting anyway daniel states that there's a hospital right with a sperm bank nearby at saint francis that's the hospital's name should have led the sentence with that but i didn't aya and maida then go to investigate leaving daniel behind along the drive maida wonders hey why didn't daniel come with us he was the head of the investigation aya says no well the thing is he wants to dig up some dirt on dr clam and also be with his son and then aya asks what happened with the ultimate being that was born in japan i don't even remember that but maida says died a long time ago with its father due to a cellular rebellion 
rebellion. That's when you can't get good for the mitochondria that came from the father didn't connect with the ones that came from Eve. Because of this, the being began to deteriorate and the father held on to the dissolving flesh as they both died. Bummer. Anyway, scene transition. They arrive at the hospital. Maida decides to stay outside and Aya heads in alone. So, Aya is in the hospital. And then all of a sudden she has a vision of a little girl that was once there. Ooh. And then Aya wonders if that's Maya or just her own reflection. Who's Maya? So Aya hops into an elevator. But Eve turns off the power to the elevator and it forces her into the deeper levels of the building must mean. As she wanders around the hospital, she can hear Eve's voice. She's taunting Aya. And then the script says, you need to do a taunt type joke. Uh... The quality on story mode has been going downhill at a steady rate. Is that a good taunt? You keep that in. Now Aya finds some stairs, but Eve collapses those stairs and it nearly kills Aya. Wow, she should be pretty dead. All right, fuck it. We need to do things a bit quicker. If we don't get a move on, it's going to be October 32nd by the time I'm finished. You know what I'm saying? So montage time. She runs around and she's fighting some monsters and she finds some fuses and she replaces the fuses and she gets the power going and then she uses the elevator and she heads to the upper level, exits the elevator, sees two small girls at the same time. It's Maya and Aya as she enters the hospital a hotel room or whatever and she's shocked to find out that at the same time it's her visions and still unable to figure out why. And she got to leave, but she makes it to the sperm bank. <laughs> you know, I got to slow down at the... <laughs> All right, go on, what did she do at the sperm bank? Here she finds the same list of names that Dr. Clam had. And also, here are patient records of her mother, her sister, and Melissa. These records also state that Melissa and Maya were brought into the hospital and operated on on the same day. Oh my god, I can't believe the kidney transplant twist is being made so obvious so far ahead of time. We then cut to the military. We see they are preparing to launch an attack on the blob in Central Park. What blob in Central Park? We then see jets take off heading for Central Park. Back to Aya. She's wandering around. She finds an empty broken container. Oh no. She's emptying them into a big jar with a pony in it. And then Aya continues onto the roof and she finds Eve. She goes, did you save some for me? Eve then, well actually there's a typo. It says even then liquefies all the jet pilots. Oh, even, how could you do it? And then the jet crashes into the hospital roof. Oh, and it forces Aya to quickly jump over the side and then Eve leaves to go give birth. Single mothers these days, <laughs> am I right, fellas? Uh, Aya then reaches the street and regroups with Daniel and Maida. They drive back to the police station. And whilst there, Detective Warner gives them some new information. Some time ago in a land far away, a doctor at the hospital was fired for selling patient records. How could he? Also, Melissa was seen going into the hospital late at night. Several times she was. Anyway, then Daniel gets mad and says, Clamp and Eve must have been working together. Let's split up and find them, he says. What just happened? Day five. Okay, that's a new chapter. Let's do a quick revision. Last we saw, Aya went into the hospital. They pumped her stomach and the doctors found gallons of... No, we're not doing that. Anyway, Eve got away with all the jizz and then there was an elevator... That's literally everything I remember. Day five, Maida and Aya head to Chinatown to look for Eve. Maida finds signs of Eve going into the sewer. It's just like a big trail of jizz. <laughs> yep, it's jizz off. <laughs> I'd know it anywhere. Why wow, this jizz? It's only 15 minutes. Oh, it's still warm. Aya heads in to the sewer or whatever. I'm going to find you, Eve. But instead she finds more monsters, as well as the gooey remains of the audience from Central Park. Oh no, they're all dead. Right, oh there's people from like the other day. But then the goo collects itself again and drops into the water supply and it has now infected the whole city. Or it's poised to at least. Ida runs to the control room and turns on a pump. It pumps out the water supply. But the goo monster slithers away. So Aya pursues it into the subway. And since it's heading towards the museum, Aya returns to the museum. Now, she also finds new monsters here that are in the shape of dinosaurs. She defeats the dinosaurs, but is confused about where they came from. She then witnesses the goo seep into the... Fo oh, okay, into the fossils. And reanimates them. She continues putting dinosaurs back into extinction. 
at a girl. That is, up until she ends up in Clamp's lab again, as she finds Mater. He then tells her that Clamp has a blood serum with Maya's name on it in the freezer. And that blood serum was under the research code EVE! What a twist. The blood serum was made up of liver cells, and Clamp has been culturing these cells for years. Let me culture you. He's like showing it anime and teaching it the violin. But I do not know anything more about the serum or whatever, says Mater. He also found out recently that Clamp is conducting research on artificial sperm. And Clamp is trying to exclude the mitochondria from the sperm to create a new type of sperm. A bigger sperm. A better tasting type of sperm. With three times the energy. So it turns out he managed to do it. And he moved it to the hospital, where he artificially inseminated those who volunteered for the experiment. The pair are then interrupted by Clamp. <gasps> He's walked into the room. Aya then tries to arrest Clamp. Ah, you're under arrest. But then he attacks Aya. But just as he does, Daniel comes from behind and hits Clamp, knocking him out. Your license has been revoked. Suddenly, Clamp regains consciousness, and Aya asks him, what are you planning? Clamp then says he's waiting for the birth of the ultimate being, and he's succeeded in creating sperm without the mitochondria. You did it. And now, Eve is pregnant with Melissa's body. What? Clamp then raises his hands in a hallelujah pose, and says, Eve, I'm ready. He then starts to burn up, and then Daniel and Mado rush out of the room. Eve then races through the museum to get to Eve. That's definitely a typo. I'll find out what happened by looking at the edit. She then finds Eve, and she is very pregnant. But Aya approaches her, and Eve mocks her. Ha ha, you are not pregnant. Eve then summons forth the goo from the park, and the goo breaks through the museum wall, and then it picks Eve up, and it transports her safely away. Thank you, goo. And then Aya's like, what the fuck? I guess I'm leaving. I will regroup with Maida and Daniel out front. Why not? They hop in the car, and they start driving. And Maida and Daniel inform Aya that Melissa has received a kidney transplant from Maya after she died in the accident. Anyway, both her mother and sisters were donors or something, which Aya never knew. And a young Dr. Clamp, who was an intern at the time, observed the operation. And the doctors who performed surgery all noted how hot that kidney was at the time. And that caused Eve to move from Maya to Melissa. Yeah, I mean, we guessed that a while ago. I mean, I'm not even paying attention and we knew that. Anyway, Melissa was taking immunosuppressive drugs. And then after that, she got a part in an opera and then she started taking more drugs and, you know, to control herself. But it turns out that all this did was make it easier for Eve to take over her entire body. Oh no. And then Eve killed the host brain, cultured the kidney cells and obtained her whole body. And then that's how she became Eve. Now we cut to the Navy, who are preparing to attack Eve again. Ah, Eve, your days are numbered. So they send out their helicopters. <laughs> And then, you know, back to the car, and Daniel hears over the radio. Uh, you know, the attack has started or whatever. <laughs> they say on the radio, and the trio rush to s stop them and try to avoid what happened yesterday with all the jets. Why, what happened with the jets? I can't remember. It must have been something bad. Anyway, they spot the giant creature, which has turned into a giant shell or something, to protect Eve. And the Navy helicopters attempt to destroy it, but it's no use. And the helicopters explode, and then they land behind the trio, and it's very action-packed. And then the officer runs over and asks them, You gotta report this to the Navy's aircraft carrier, why not? Which they do. Anyway, the captain asks Aya to drop a nuke from a helicopter onto the creature, since she's the only one that Eve can't ignite. And then Aya goes, yeah, that sounds good. Cut to the helicopter, where she's got the nuke. I thought that was a joke. All right, they are flying towards the goo. Da -da 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 and it's positioned next to the Statue of Liberty. Oh no, not that gift from France. By the way, did you know that the Statue of Liberty was originally a bronze color because it is made of copper. And then over time it went green because that's what copper does. And that this lady is only one sixteenth of an inch thick on average, which means she is the same thickness as an Easter egg. Just thought you'd like to know. Sorry, we're in the middle of an action scene. Anyway, the pilot dies, but Aya shoots the nuke into the goo. Take that, and it knocks the creature back, and it topples the Statue of Liberty. Oh no, chocolate Easter egg lady. Eve, however, emerges from the goo. Aha, I am not even harmed. My goo has protected me. And she is evolved and unharmed. And so Aya parachutes down from the helicopter to finish the job. Eve gloats again and says, ha ha. Humans 
have just been, you know, whatever, whatever, I'm gloating. But they no longer need them, so mitochondria will evolve or something and become human beings and rule the earth. Eve then begins to evolve. Oh my god, nudity. Aya then fights her with her gun. Oh, and wins. Well, that's handy. So, Eve breaks down and dissolves into slime. And then Aya turns around and she does a cool one-liner cop. And it goes, there must have been some mitochondria that underwent a different type of evolution. Think about it, Eve. She should have said something like, nice to meet goo. Or, um, let's meet up nukes week. Or, I might have contact you later, Drea. Hold on, I gotta keep all these in. Something, something, powerhouse of the cell. Or, don't be so selfish. It's not so bad. I like that one. Where are we? Day six. Let's do a quick recap. We defeated Eve and we nuked New York. Hooray! Two birds, one stone. Anyway, so Daniel and Mida congratulate Aya. It's all over now, they say. Uh oh. But then an earthquake happens and it turns out that all that goo all over the fallen Statue of Liberty is actually a uterus for the ultimate being. And then all of a sudden, an oversized baby emerges. This is fucking great. An oversized baby emerges from the slime crying. Disgusting! And as it emerges, all the naval ships catch fire and it heads for Aya. I'm gonna kill ya, Aya, says the baby. Aya knows that she's the only one who can fight this baby. So they fight. But as they do, the creature keeps evolving with no end in sight. But then we see, it's Maida and Daniel in a helicopter to the rescue. Maida has special bullets with Aya cells on them. What a deus ex machina. Daniel grabs them and jumps out of the helicopter. He starts to burn up, but throws the bullets to Aya before safely landing in the water. Anyway, Aya uses the bullets and defeats the creature, but it is not dead. And it's writhing around, and then Aya baits the creature into the engine room of the ship. There's more sperm in there, fella! And she overloads the ship to self-destruct, and then she escapes just in the nick of time. As the ship explodes, and it's very scary. And then she joins Maida and Daniel on the shore, and Daniel says, it's finally over. And then Aya says, I wonder why I only have this power. And then Daniel and Maida go, he fucking dumped, we explained this like three days ago. Well, it's here, and so we're going to do the explanation again. So there was a part of Maya that was transplanted into Aya, and then Aya was born with a... Wait, what? This is different. Aya was born with a defect in her right eye, so Maya's cornea was transplanted into Aya. Then Maida suggests that Aya's mitochondria underwent a different evolution to Melissa's... Who's Melissa? And this caused the mitochondria to live symbiotically with Aya. But then Mida also muses that, say, oh, I wonder if mitochondria are to humans what humans are to the earth. Think about it. Think about it. It's kind of deep, right? And then they decide to watch the sunrise together, but they don't directly look at it because it's bad for her eyes, especially considering she had a cornea transplant. And then, you know, to make up for Christmas, hey, do you want to go to the opera later? And she says, no, I watched like 500 people die last week there. Why would I want to go back? <laughs> Oh, they actually went. All right. A while later, they're at the opera again. But then during that performance, a new power wakes up within Aya and it spreads to the rest of the crowd. And then she turns to the camera and goes, sequel perhaps? Question mark. Just a big question mark comes up in the middle of the screen. Analysis. So usually we do discussions, but there's no one here. And it's dark and it's kind of spooky. But what did I think of this story? It's pretty straightforward. It's like Resident Evil, but with less nonsense. And the G virus and the T virus just does away with all that stuff. It's like, okay, no, here's the thing. It's Eve. It's called Eve. Easy. So I like that. Did they ever do Parasite Eve 2? That'll be up on the screen. La, 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 la. Oh my god, what is that sound? Oh no, there's an Eve in the room. Ah, oh, I'm dying.